Welcome to this training video where we will show you how to submit a cash threshold report, also known as a CTR, on the FIC's registration and reporting platform. To access the platform, visit www.fic.gov.za. Find the Click Here to Report button on the homepage and then log in. Enter your username and password details that you created during registration. To submit a report, cash must have been either paid into or out of your account, or received at or paid from your premises. Let's look at a typical scenario that we will use in this reporting exercise. Say the accountable or reporting institution, AI or RI, is institution Y, and Mr. X is their client. It is also assumed that you, the viewer of this video, are the compliance or reporting officer of institution Y and are responsible for reporting to the FIC. Mr. X walks in and pays 25,000 Rand in cash to institution Y at its premises. To report this transaction, Go to the drop-down menu, New Reports, and select Web Reports. The first thing you will need to do is to select which type of report you would like to submit. In this case, where Mr. X made a single cash payment that was above the transaction threshold of 24,999 Rand 99 cents, a CTR report will be selected. If, for example, Mr. X made a payment of 10,000 Rand cash in the morning and then later in the afternoon another 15,000 Rand was paid in cash to Institution Y, then this will be reported as a CTRA. CTRA stands for Cash Threshold Report Aggregation. This means that the 10,000 Rand and 15,000 Rand received by Institution Y within 24 hours from Mr. X was over the threshold and must be reported on the same report. It is important that each transaction should be captured individually within the report. Back to our example, let's select a cash threshold report. There are a number of fields that are automatically filled in with the details obtained from your initial registration, like the reporting person and location. All the fields marked with an asterisk are mandatory fields and must be completed. The unmarked fields are also important to complete to the best of your knowledge and where information is readily available. The information obtained from CTR and CTRA may or can be used in the fight against crime. For more information on the mandatory information, including transactional data required when submitting a report, review the money laundering and terrorist financing control regulations available on the FIC website. In the Reporting Entity Branch field, you will fill in your own entity's branch details, which is where the transaction took place. In the Reporting Entity Reference field, you will need to supply your unique internal reference number linked to this report. When the FIC requires more information on this report, it will refer to this internal reference number. This is, therefore, very important to capture. The FIC reference number will be referred to in cases where a submitted report has failed and needs to be corrected. Further information on this can be found in the CTR user guide. The location field is the address of the reporter. This is automatically filled in. It is good practice to regularly save the information that you have already captured while completing the report. Click on the Save Report button to save a draft of the report. A copy of your report can be found under the Drafted Reports menu. Next, it is very important to select the correct indicator for this report. In this example, we are dealing with a cash threshold report and you can simply search for a CTR and select the correct indicator on the right. Next, we need to supply more information about the transaction between Mr. X and Institution Y. In the number field, you need to complete the unique transaction number given by Institution Y. If, for example, Mr. X deposited cash into Institution Y's bank account, they would typically use the invoice number issued for this transaction. If you do not have a transaction number, you can generate a unique number from the system by clicking the gear icon. 
The internal reference number is institution-wise internal transaction reference number. The trans mode code is very important to fill in correctly. The trans mode code for CTRs must always be either cash received by AI or RI or cash paid by the AI or RI. In our example, cash received by AI or RI must be selected. The local amount is the value of the transaction in South African Rand. In this example, 25,000 Rand. It is very important to capture the transaction amount excluding decimal values. The date field refers to the date when the transaction took place between Mr. X and Institution Y. Late deposit is not applicable in the South African market. If applicable, you can fill in the teller's name and who authorized the transaction. The location field is where the transaction took place. Enter the full address, including the postal code. Remember, fields marked with an asterisk are mandatory and needs to be completed. If you have any further details regarding the transaction, this can be submitted in the description and comments field. Always remember that you only have 48 hours to report the transaction. In the from and to type fields, you need to define the source, which is Mr. X, and the destination, which is institution Y. Firstly, you will need to choose whether the transaction was made by your client or not. For example, Mr. X is the client of institution Y. Therefore, in the from type, you will click on the My Client button. Next, you will need to supply more information about your client. The funds code in this example will be cash received by AI or RI. The country is where the transaction took place, in this case, South Africa. If the cash was paid in foreign currency, the reporting entity must select the correct currency, the amount paid and the exchange rate at the time of the transaction. If Mr. X paid in the cash on behalf of the company where he is employed, he will be seen as a conductor and his details will have to be filled in. Under party type, there are three options to choose from, which are person, account or entity. In our example, Mr. X is making the deposit on behalf of himself. We will therefore select person. You can use an existing person if the information was captured and saved in the current Go AML web session. If no information is available, you will have to complete it manually. Under person, the ID number or passport number, the nationality and residence fields are important. The report will be rejected if these fields are not filled in. If Mr. X paid the cash on behalf of an entity, then you will choose Entity and supply all the particulars of that entity. It is also mandatory to provide the details of a director for the entity. Now that the source of the cash is defined, you will add the party and save. Next, we have to describe the destination where the cash was paid to. In this example, Institution Y is the receiver of the cash and the reporting entity. So you will select My Client and complete all relevant information. Under Party Type, there are, again, three choices, which is Person, Account and Entity. In our example, Institution Y is an entity and this will be selected. Complete all the particulars of the entity and provide the details of a director for the entity. If Mr. X paid the cash into the bank account of Institution Y, then you would select Account. The account information of Institution Y will have to be completed. Complete at a minimum all fields with an asterisk. In addition, the SWIFT code in the case of a financial institution or the institution code of the account holder's financial institution is mandatory. The report will be rejected if this information is not provided. The balance field is for the current balance of the account at the date of reporting. It is also mandatory to provide the details of a signatory for the account. Now that the recipient of the cash is defined, you can click on Add Party and Save. 
If you are submitting a CTRA and you are listing your transactions that add up and exceeds the threshold within a 24-hour period, you need to add each transaction separately. You would do this by completing one transaction, save it, add another transaction by clicking on the plus button. If you have more information under goods and services, you can define what Mr. X paid the cash for. For example, did he purchase a vehicle or property from Institution Y? You are required to add a description of the goods and services purchased. You can add any other documentation, such as a copy of Mr. X's ID and invoices that may be relevant to this report. To do so, you first need to save the report. Then click on Show Attachments where you can upload the documents to the platform. Once you are done, save your report and remember to review it by selecting the Preview button before you submit it. Ensure that you press the Submit Report button to submit the report to the FIC. If the report is only saved, the FIC will not have received the report. In such an instance, you would not have discharged your reporting obligation. Remember, saved reports that have not been submitted can be found under the Drafted Reports drop-down menu under Not Submitted Web Reports. From here, you can either edit, delete, or preview the report before submission. Monitor the messages you receive on the message board regularly to remediate rejected reports. You only have 48 hours to submit a report from the time the AI or RI becomes aware of the transaction. Thank you for watching. For more information, visit www.fic.gov.za for the CTR or CTRA user guide or contact the FIC Compliance Contact Center.